In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can add character animations to your models in the React 3 Fiber scene. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashtubs and welcome back to my channel. So far, we have learned a lot on React 3 Fiber. And in the previous video, I showed you how to add animations to objects. And in this video, we're going to take it a step further, adding animations to bones with a character. I highly recommend watching this playlist from the start if you intend to follow along with me. You will learn a lot on how to build out this metaverse. Let's jump right in and understand how animations with bones and a character work. Well, firstly, we have a model. And this model, as you can see if we go to wireframe mode, is purely a mesh. There are no bones inside of it. Now you can add bones in Blender, animate them and export them as well. However, not a lot of people here know how to use Blender. And therefore we're going to make use of a tool that's going to add some bone armature structures in this character and help us with animations. The tool I'm talking about is called Mixamo. Now this is a Adobe product and it's wonderful. You get to choose from characters that you can use and you can choose any character here and follow the same process. Or you can simply choose animations and export them without the skin. When I'm referring to the skin, I'm talking about the mesh itself and not the bone structure inside which carries the animation. Basically a skin wraps the bone structure and follows it wherever the animation tells it to go. So that is how basic I can explain this. But we don't want to use a basic character over here. We want to use our own model. Now I'm lucky enough to have my own character. But if you don't, you can always get one from TurboSquid or Sketchfab. Just do a little bit of a search for a character. And it's highly recommended to choose a low poly character. Especially because we're dealing with the browser. Or alternatively, like I said, you can just choose a character here in Mixamo and follow along. But I want to show you the way I do it to incorporate animations on a custom character that we have here, our sketchy ape. As long as you can find a character mesh that is either in a T pose or an A pose. My character is in an A pose. And the reason is because the character's arms is busy forming an A shape. Sometimes the T shape will have the arms going horizontal. The next step is to select the character and export it as an FBX model. I'm going to click on selected objects only and then export it to my desktop. I'll refer to this as my model and click on export. Back in Mixamo, there's a button to upload a character. Now it can take an FBX OBJ or a zip file. We have our FBX. So let's go and select our model FBX and import it. And here is our character. Mixamo informs us that a T pose character is actually better to use. However, I'm going to give this a try. Now, if your character is flipped around, you can just flip it back with using these arrows. And when it's front facing, click on next. Next, we have to position the chin, wrists, elbows, knees, and the groin. The next step is to align the chin. So we'll do that. Then the wrist, as well as the elbow, knees, as well as the groin. And once you're happy, you can leave everything as it is. And just click on Next. This will now construct an armature inside this mesh. If it was a success, then you'll see an animating character. Now, the texture is not here, but once you export this as a GLB file again, it will have the texture. For now, it's just the animation and the rig. Now, there is something happening with its thumb over there, but it's good enough for this example. Click on Next. And if this process didn't work for you, just retry it. Here is our uh, a frame pose of the sketchy ape. Now let's go to animations and look at a walking animation. 
you can search for animations over here and let's choose a nice walking animation maybe this one now you can see the character walking and what you need to do is click in place this will make the animation play but not move the character forward because later on in the series we will do that with code we just want this playing loop walking animation and a few others such as idle running jumping and so on but i'm happy with this animation so let's click on download now here for this animation and particularly the walk animation we don't want the skin so select without skin and the rest is fine click on download we are going to export the character with a skin as well but for that one we can choose an idle animation this animation will play once the character is just standing still. So I'm going to select an idle animation for the character. This one is a bit stagnant. Let's make it a bit more actionable. And choose this idle. That's pretty cool. Let's click on download. And this time, we're going to export this with the skin. So click on download. We can do the same for a running animation as well as a jumping animation. So for now, let's just choose a running animation. I'll pick this one. Remember to keep it in place and click on download this one without skin. And lastly, a jumping animation. So now these animations would be enough for us to do what we need to. And this one's going to be without skin as well. Great, so back in Blender, what I'm going to do is actually delete this model. Then I'm going to click on import and we're going to import our FBX. In my downloads, I've got the idle FBX. This should be the model with the idle animation. And here it is. So if we click on spacebar, we should see the character and idle. Now we notice that the character does not have its texture and that's because I need to reapply it again. It doesn't know where to pick up the file, yet it is UV unwrapped. So I'm gonna click here on base color and then select my image texture. And then I'm just going to point it to where my texture is. And here we go. Now you probably don't need to do this if you're using one of the characters from Mixamo, uh, but if you are using a downloaded character, when you import it again, you need to point it to the right file. Now our texture is back. Now, if this is a bit confusing and you would like me to make a tutorial series on Blender and explain the inner workings of how I got this right, then that's fine. But this is mostly the job of any 3D creator and they'll certainly know how to help you out if you struggle. However, we have our idle animation playing. If we open the armature, we can see the animations. And here is the idle animation. Let's maybe go ahead and rename this. In order to rename an action, let's go to the dope sheet and select the action editor. In here, we can see there's our idle animation action. And we can simply rename this to be idle. Then we can just make sure that this is saved. Now it's going to be difficult for us to apply the rest of the animations, walking, running, all these things simply by just copying the keyframes in here. But Mixamo actually has a Blender plugin that will help facilitate us copying over the animations. You can find that free plugin on this web page. Scroll down. And as we can see, we can turn our armature into a customizable rig. So let's click on Get Add-on. This will download a zip file. Back in Blender, in order to add custom components, we can go to Preferences, Add-ons, and then we can install. Now, on Downloads, I can install this zip file, but I've already done so. So once you have installed it, just search for Mixamo 
and make sure that it's ticked on. If you do so, you can close this page, you should see an extra mixer mode tab here. Now with our beautiful new plugin, let's go ahead and select the armature and click on create control rig. Click on OK and then we can see a rig being generated for us from the armature. A rig is something that controls the armature below. So if we switch to pose mode, we can actually go ahead and move things around. That's pretty cool. But that's not what we want to do. So we want to actually apply the walking animation, much like we have the idle animation here. Now we might have lost our idle um, action, so it's now called action one. But just to be safe, I'm going to call this idle and resave over the other idle. So make sure that this is called idle and remember to save. Now for importing our walking animation. Go to file, click on import and import the walking FBX file. This will have our armature. For the next step, make sure you have selected your rig and then clear the source skeleton. Use the eyedrop tool to select the walking armature that has been imported. This is called armature one in our case. Then simply click on apply animation to control rig. Once you have done so, you will see the new walking animation. Then we can simply go ahead and rename this. Sometimes duplicate actions are created. So just make sure that you rename that and click on this save icon. Fantastic. Our walking animation is applied. And we also have the idle action as well. Now, this armature that we've imported, we can simply get rid of right now because we will still have the action applied to our model. So the walking should still be there. Let's go ahead and import another animation. This time, maybe the running one. So the process is exactly the same. Select the rig, click on the eyedrop tool, click on the armature and apply the animation. Then, once you're happy, call this whatever animation this is, in my case running, save it and then delete the armature. Now we have a running. Now I've done the exact same thing with the jump animation and also made sure that I added that as an action. Now currently we have a lot of actions and redundant files in here that we have saved uh, such as duplicates and so on. To get rid of this in Blender you have to click on this icon, go to blend file, go to the actions and then here you need to delete some of these unused actions. So right click and delete them and just make sure that you have the ones that you want in here. So we should be left with an idle, jump, running and walking. Then we can switch back to our layer view. Perfect. Let's make sure that we have a jump. Our idle is indeed there. We have our running animation as well as a walking animation. Once you are happy with all these, you can click on stash. And now we get to export our character. So select this model, click on file, export, DLB file, include selected objects. And in animation, just make sure these are ticked on. I'm going to save this on my desktop and I'll call this my player. Click on export. Now to get the model loaded into our scene. Well, in the previous video, we've had this animated cube component. And basically we added this by first loading the GLB model, then extracting the actions 
and then playing one action. For now, what I am going to do is just comment this play out and let's call this my player. And instead of importing the cube, let's import the player, which I've now added under the models folder over here. Once we have this, we need to now replace my cube with my player, save this, and let's go back to our scene. And there we go. There is our sketchy ape. And it's not animating at all. Before we just play a random animation, let's actually make sure that the animations are there. So I'm going to console.log the model. This will give me a good idea if the animations array exist. So let's go back and let's open this up. In the animations, we can open this and we only see two animation clips, the idle and walking. Why is that? Because we also have a running and a jump. Back in Blender, what we need to make sure we do is on each one of these actions, we need to click on stash. So basically select an action and click on stash. Select one, click on stash, and select one, click on stash. Make sure that in the NLA tracks, that now you see each action over here. Once you do see all four of them, then go ahead and repeat that process of exporting the GLB model. I am showing this because this is a common mistake that people make and then you wonder why your animations are not there. So now once you've replaced it with the new GLB file and you open it up, we should see all four animations. Now let's play around. Let's actually play this walking animation clip. When we go back here in the uncommented line, just replace the bounce with walking, save it and go back and we should see our character doing the walking animation. We can play all of the animations like this. One aesthetic thing that we notice is that there are no shadows and the ape is a bit big. So one thing that we can do to solve this, if you remember in our trees, how we imported the models, we had this model loop where we turned on the shadows. We can take this and go and place it in here in our component. This will traverse and make sure that all the shadows are on on this model. And for the scale, what we can do is say model.scene, because we want to set the scene, dot scale, dot set, and we need to give it three values. Let's make it 0.5 to make the ape half the size. When we look at it now, the ape is a much more realistic size, as well as we can see the shadows. This is fantastic and we now have a character that's walking in our scene. However, the character is not moving and will walk forever. That's not the behavior that we want. We most probably want the walking animation to play when we click the forward or backwards or sideways button. How do we do that? Well, you'll have to find out in the next video where we will be discussing the inputs and how we can add this to our project. In the meantime, practice what we've learned today or watch some of the previous videos if you haven't yet. But if you enjoyed this content, please leave me a big fat thumbs up because it does help the channel. Comment below what you thought and what you want to learn next. And remember to subscribe for more content like this. And as always, have a fantastic day. I'll see you in the next video.